Hello, this is part 2 of the GIMP basic tutorial. The next thing we are going to do is resize it, so scale it to fit my desktop. So I want this image to be my desktop background, my wallpaper. Well, and you might think, well, I like to have a photograph of my holiday or something. I also want it to be my wallpaper, but I don't know how to do it. Well, you can do it this way, I'll teach you. Just right click anywhere on your desktop and click properties. This is a Dutch translation, but uh, you will notice is click properties. You click on wallpaper. And there you can select the wallpaper you want. Well, for this screencast, I have switched off the wallpapers. The next thing you uh, need to know is what is the size of my wallpaper? Well, you can click here on the right top of this properties and you can see here the actual resolution of your monitor and you see at my monitor it's 1280 by 1024 so note this because we are going to need it so I've taken note of the of the resolution of my desktop so I can just click on OK here and go back to my image so I've put an annotation here the width have to be 1280 pixels if I look here I see the resolution of my image it's more than 3000 pixels so in this case we will have to resize the image we have to make it smaller we can do that by going to image scale image and right here we can choose to how many pixels we want to rescale it and what we also can take note of is this little chain that chain has to do with the image proportion if you break the chain and change the width the image will look stretched when you resize it if you just let the chain be and if I resize the width the height will change accordingly so if I resize the width to be smaller you can see the height is also going to be smaller so whenever I want it to be 1280 pixels wide and I click anywhere like here the height changes accordingly so right now we applied the appropriate width and we can just press on scale to activate it so like you can see here in the top the image is scaled to 1280 that's the width but the height how high the image is is 947 and that's not what I want it to be I want it to be 1024 so that's more so we will have to add some height to the image first I will um, make the image a little larger for our view put it at 25% of the original uh, dimensions and now I go to image canvas size and right here in the canvas size I can choose which canvas I want to allow to the image and I can add space around the image without resizing the photo and in this case I want the width to stay the same and I want to add some space to the top and bottom and let me put the height to 1024 when I fill just fill it in here and I click anywhere I see the width will change again to something that's bigger but the width we want to stay that in 1280 that is because here also a proportion chain appears in this case we don't need it so we can just break it and fill in 1280 again here and when we look at a representation of the image you see some space below here I can press center so it will add space above it and below it I can also drag the image if I want but in this case I want to center it well if I want to activate it I just press resize 
So right, right here we have the result. I will resize it a little for you, so you can see it better. So right now we see that space is added above and beneath the image. And you might ask, this checkered space, what, what is that? You will see that a lot more when you are going to work with the GIMP. So it's important to know, well, that's transparent space. Because the photo is not as large as the whole image, because we resized the canvas. And we can make this bigger to fill up the desktop and change the color of the added space. And I'll just do that. I go to the layer menu and select layer to image size. What this does is exactly what it says. The layer is smaller as the image. And right now we have resized it to image size. You see that by the uh, border, which is given by the dotted lines. It's not always this way, those checkered uh, boxes, when you make the layer the same size of the image. It also might fill up with the color. Why is that? Well, I can explain by clicking on layer and then transparency. Right here, it has two possibilities, like add an alpha channel and remove an alpha channel. Those two represent the image being able to have a transparent layer. And when I say remove alpha channel, this space around here, which was transparent, will now be white. It uh, will be the background color of the image. The background color is given here. So in this case it will be white. When I press Ctrl Z to go back one step, I think transparent is not, not so beautiful. So we want to make this a color. And this color can be, for instance, blue, because it's the, the sky here is also blue. So if you want more or less the same color, we can do it by by going to the dropper tool, which is here, the color picker, select this one and select the color you want. Well, say I want a light color, blue. I click here and you see the foreground color changes to this, this color blue, which I just picked. If you just pay attention to this box and I click anywhere else in the image, the foreground color will change accordingly. So that's very handy to know. Well, like I said, I want, to, I want it to be a light color, a light blue color. So I just pick that. And next I go to the bucket fill tool. I click on that. Uh, bucket fill tool fills areas with the same color. I click on the transparent area and the light blue color, which I picked here, applies here. The same thing I can do with the bottom of the image. I can go to the color picker again and pick an appropriate color like dark green, like the, the bushes here. A very dark green. Go to the bucket fill tool and click there. So now we have an image of 1280 by 1024 like we wanted and it's it's filled